Hey guys, this is Sandeep from Revitless and welcome to our camera review of the Realme X3 Super Zoom. So this is a very interesting device as it gives you telephoto capabilities that are generally seen only on a flagship model and this is available at a fraction of that cost. Now before we get this started, please do make sure to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications for more videos like this. Now let's begin the video. The Realme X3 Super Zoom features a very similar layout at the back featuring a quad camera system but if you notice up close you will see that there is a difference particularly at the top where you have a square camera module. Now this is because this houses a periscope zoom lens and this is an 8 megapixel periscope lens that gives 5x optical zoom, has optical image stabilization and has f3.4 aperture as well. The primary camera is a Samsung GW1 sensor with 64 megapixels of resolution, f1.8 aperture and 1x1.7 in sensor size. You also get an additional 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with f2.3 aperture and lastly a 2 megapixel macro lens as well. Like we mentioned in our Realme X50 Pro and Realme 6 Pro camera reviews, Realme has really changed the processing on the images and the colors are now much more natural looking unlike phones of the past with boosted colors. If you still want the boosted colors, you can of course make use of the AI Dazzle mode which does bump up the saturation or you can also do it manually later but I personally prefer the natural colors which allows you more room to play around with in post-production. However, even with that said, at some times in certain situations we do see hints of the older processing coming into play with higher levels of saturation than normal. The sharpness and detail are good and similar to what you would expect from a 64 megapixel sensor but it does feel like it can do a bit more but like we mentioned earlier even with the X50 Pro 5G we feel that Samsung GW1 sensor on Realme devices are doing better compared to the same sensor that's being used on other devices since they actually have tuned it quite well since they've been using it over many phones in the past. Default photos are captured in 16 megapixels of resolution that combines 4 pixels into 1 and gives a resulting pixel size of 1.6 micron compared to 0.8 micron default. You can however shoot in full 64 megapixels of resolution as well without pixel binning and doing so gives larger file sizes and resolution that are roughly 3 times the size of the pixel bin images. You don't get much of a benefit from this as sharpness is more or less the same if not worse and often with higher levels of noise. So we would suggest sticking to 16 megapixels of resolution. On the X50 Pro we had noted that the color science was good across the regular and telephoto cameras but was bad on the ultra wide angle camera which was quite a bit more saturated and also more contrast rich. On the X3 Super Zoom they managed to reduce the inconsistencies and while it is there in some rare occasions overall they all look very similar still. In terms of low light performance it's better to make use of the nightscape mode if you want the best quality possible. Performance is good but I'm not sure if it's really flagship grade and it can definitely use some tweaking here or there for sure but what is definitely worth noting and a welcome change is the lack of oversaturating the frame that was a tendency in Nightscape mode on older Realme phones. Nightscape mode still reduces the noise, increases the clarity and also gives the apparent feeling of higher sharpness and better detailing as well. You can also shoot using tripod mode which will allow the phone to capture better photos using longer exposures and lower ISO levels and therefore getting better shots and this can be enabled using the small icon in the nightscape mode on the upper left corner. One of the main things that Realme is highlighting with the X3 Super Zoom is the ability to capture starry night sky photos and this is possible with both the telephoto as well as the primary camera. And while it does give better results in terms of low light imaging, we were not able to capture starry night sky particularly because there are a lot of clouds these days over Bangalore so we were not able to get a clear night sky. We'll repeat the same process in the future and hopefully we'll come up with a separate video that highlights the abilities as well as reviews the starry night sky modes for you. The night mode also helps to increase the dynamic range in daylight photos especially when you look at the ultra wide angle camera which has a slightly limited dynamic range especially in those difficult lighting conditions. The ultra wide angle camera helps to capture a more dramatic field of view compared to the regular camera but the images are much softer and aren't as detailed. There's also a difference in saturation as well as the contrast and color tone between both the cameras but the most noteworthy point are the chromatic aberrations. The macro camera works well in terms of being able to focus really up close and get as close to an object or subject as possible but in terms of the sheer image quality the macro camera isn't great. There are a lot of aberrations, some vignetting and weird color but most importantly the low 2 megapixel resolution means there isn't much detail or sharpness to work with but I probably still capture it with the main camera and crop in later. 
Now coming to a telephoto camera which is actually one of the best things about this camera device is that it features a 5x optical zoom and it can go all the way up to 60x but of course that is largely digital and while you can get photos they are largely unusable at that range. It can rather be used as a viewfinder to obtain information that's far away. Say a signboard or number that's far but you want to get it without going closer to it. This can be used for that. As for regular usage, up to 10x you have amazing shots with great detail and sharpness while up to 20x it is fairly usable as well. Now I would stick to 10x max personally as that is enough for more than 99% of the scenarios and the telephoto color profile is very similar to the primary camera as we mentioned earlier. There are quick toggles for 2x, 5x and 10x and the 2x mode is actually a crop of the primary camera itself but still it gives very impressive results and noise is present in most of these shots but again it's not too evident unless you pixel peep. Now the optical stabilization is also pretty good and while it's not as great as say the Find X2 Pro or the flagship devices from Huawei, these kind of results that you get with the telephoto camera are unmatched especially in this price point from a camera phone. Portrait mode can be used at 1x or 2x and portrait mode works well for objects with excellent edge detection and blurring albeit with higher than appreciated softness on some edges. Still very much usable and of good quality overall and it also does well for humans for most part but in rare instances the edge detection can go a bit wrong. You get a dual camera setup at the front with a primary Sony 32 megapixel f2.5 lens which is a Sony IMX616 sensor as well as a secondary 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide angle camera as well. The front facing camera is definitely a weak point on the X3 Super Zoom as we found it to have less dynamic range and despite turning off beauty mode altogether there still appears to be some smoothing of the skin and not too much detail of sharpness. Portrait mode is also decent but not great as it does tend to have some issues especially in terms of the edge detection. Videos can be recorded up to 4K 60fps with EIS using the primary camera but you can record only 1080p 30fps with the ultra wide angle camera. The benefit of the X3 Super Zoom is that you get EIS all round that is with the ultra wide angle camera, the primary camera, the telephoto camera and even with the front facing camera. As a result videos look pretty good and it's great for vlogging especially but one thing that's worth noting is the fact that there's no major difference between the regular and HDR mode as the dynamic range remains more or less similar and even in the ultra steady mode there's no major difference in terms of stabilization. Perhaps these things will get better with firmware updates but still overall the video recording is quite impressive especially for a smartphone under 30,000 rupees. This is the front facing camera on the Realme X3 Super Zoom capturing 1080p 30fps video. Let me know what you guys think about the overall sharpness, dynamic range, how well it's became my voice in this scenario and the stabilization as well. This is the front facing camera ultra wide angle camera on the realme x3 super zoom capturing video let me know what you guys think about the overall sharpness stabilization how well is picking up my voice in this scenario and the overall dynamic range as well the manual mode also supports raw capture and that means you get a lot more room to play around with your images and this is supported only on the primary camera Overall the Realme X3 Super Zoom is actually a very great camera device, it gives you great video all round, gives you good photos overall and especially gives you great telephoto experience that you can find only on higher end flagship devices that generally cost upwards of 50 or 60 thousand rupees. That's it for this video guys, if you have any questions do let me know in the comment section below. See you again in the next one.